Hi friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer, and as you can see today, we're in my kitchen again. We're going to be making another sourdough recipe today. Now, the classic round sourdough bread is delicious and amazing, and I definitely think that every sourdough baker should have that in their repertoire, but it doesn't work as well for sandwiches, and it doesn't work as well for something like French toast, because it has that wonderful, thick, crunchy crust, which is delicious, but that's not what you look for when you want a sandwich sometimes. And so what we're going to be doing today is a different type of sourdough bread that has a soft crust. This is specifically a sandwich bread, but you could definitely use it in many other ways. And one trick when you're making sourdough, if you want to have a softer crust and kind of a, just an overall softer texture, a richer texture, what you want to do is add some fat to your recipe. In the regular sourdough bread recipe, you basically have your sourdough starter, you have flour, you have water, and you have salt. And that's all the ingredients. And so that is great for just making a, a quick and simple, well, I shouldn't say quick, sourdough takes a long time to rise, but the actual time that you put into it is quick. And then it has a lot of hands-off time as well. So this bread is gonna have a few extra ingredients. We're basically going to replace our water with some whole milk, and we're also going to add some butter. And the addition of those ingredients is going to make our crust a lot softer. The other thing that we're going to do differently is when we bake our bread, we're first going to shape it into a long loaf rather than a round. That will make for more uniform sandwich slices. We are also going to brush the crust with an egg wash, and that will give us a nice shiny crust and just keep it a little bit, just a little softer. It gives it a, a different texture. So let's take a look at the ingredients that you're going to need to make this bread, and we'll get started. So to make this bread recipe, you're going to need some all-purpose flour. You are, of course, going to need your sourdough starter. You're going to need salt. You're going to need a cup of milk. I have some nice fresh milk from a local dairy here. You're going to need two tablespoons of butter and you're going to need just a little bit of sugar. You're also going to need one egg for the egg wash, but we'll talk about that when it's time to actually get our bread in the oven. So for now, let's get started baking our bread. The first thing we're going to do is this milk is cold from the fridge. We're going to heat that up on our stove top. You're going to want to heat your milk up to about a little over 100 degrees. Now, I'm gonna be honest and say that I never take the temperature of my milk. You're going to heat up your milk and then you're going to use that hot milk to melt your butter. The butter will slightly cool down the temperature of your milk. Once you get it cooled down, you want it to be about 100 degrees, which I figure is pretty close to body temperature. So I just test the temperature by putting a little on my wrist the same way you would for a baby's bottle. And if it feels ever so slightly warm but not hot at all, then I say it's good enough. The reason we want to make sure that it's not too hot is because if we use milk that's too hot, you're going to kill your sourdough and then your bread won't rise. Okay, so we're going to pour our milk into this pan here. And then I'm just gonna turn my oven, I'm gonna turn it on about medium heat because I'm gonna be right here keeping a close eye on it. If you're not going to be right here to keep an eye on it, I recommend a lower heat. But since we're right here, we'll go ahead and heat that up. So while our milk is heating up, we're going to go ahead and measure some of our other ingredients. The first thing that we're going to need is our sourdough starter here. Now, I know my previous sourdough recipes have been measured with grams rather than volume. This particular recipe uses volume. You could certainly do it in grams as well. I think that the recipe author does give a weight measurement as well. I'm just used to measuring this particular recipe with volume, so that's what I'm going to do today. But you can certainly look up the recipe. I'm going to link the recipe in the video, by the way, in the video description, by the way. So you don't have to worry about following along too closely or writing any of this down. I'll list out all the ingredients and amounts in the description, and I will also include a link to the author's original recipe. So first we're going to measure out one cup of our sourdough starter here. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that into our bowl. And then now that we have our sourdough starter out and I've poured out most of it to use in our bread recipe. This is a great opportunity to feed the rest of our starter. If you are familiar with sourdough at all, you'll notice that I probably maintain my starter a little bit differently than most people. I'm not all that precise or scientific about it. So if you are a person who likes things to be really precise and scientific, probably don't do my method, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. If you are a little more laid back and you like to just kind of eyeball things, this method will be perfect for you. So we're gonna take a look at our jar here. Um, it's hard to see because there is sourdough on the side, but I've got about half a cup or so of starter left, probably a little less than half a cup. 
So that's half a cup by volume. When you feed your starter, what you basically want to do is use equal parts by weight, starter, water, and flour. And I don't bother weighing it, I just kind of eyeball it. Basically your starter and water are going to weigh about the same. So you're going to add an equal amount of water. So we have just under half a cup of starter, so we're gonna add just under half a cup of water. Flour weighs a little bit less. So you're going to use about twice as much flour by volume, a little bit less than twice as much flour by volume. So because I have a little bit less than half a cup of starter here, I'm going to use a little bit less than one cup and I'm making a mess because I was too lazy to get out my funnel. But I guess it's a trade-off instead of getting out my funnel, now I have to clean up a mess. So I've added probably about three quarters of a cup of flour in here. I'm going to grab a half a cup of water and put that in as well. Now, as I said, this is not the most precise way to feed your starter. So especially if you're just getting started with starter, you may not want to use my method. This starter is very established and I've had it, I've had it for years. So if I keep it on my counter and feed it this way about once a day, that works well for me. Most people keep their starter in the refrigerator and feed it about once a week or when they need to use it. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn our milk off over here because that is starting to steam. So back to the starter. Most people keep it in the refrigerator and will feed it about once a week or as when they need to use it. I keep it on my, on my counter because I use it so often. And if you keep it on your counter, you're going to have to feed it every single day. Okay, so here's our milk. You can see that it's steaming. I've turned it off the heat because it definitely is hot enough. We're going to go ahead and take this two tablespoons of butter. You can see flour on the plate from the mess I made earlier. But we're going to take this two tablespoons of butter, add it into our milk, and the heat from the hot milk is going to melt the butter. So you can see that our butter is starting to melt into the milk here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this sit, and we want it to cool down till it's about 100 degrees or so. It's, it's steaming right now, so I'm gonna say that it's pretty well above that right now. So we're just gonna let that cool and we're gonna go back to working on our other ingredients in our bread while we wait for this to cool. Okay, so in our stand mixer, we have the one cup of sourdough starter already. We're going to measure out a couple more ingredients that we need to add in. We're going to need a tablespoon of sugar. We're going to need half a tablespoon, which is the same as a teaspoon and a half of salt. I have kosher salt here. You could use sea salt. You could use Himalayan pink salt. Just whatever salt you have on hand is fine. You can see here the butter is all melted in, all incorporated. I'm going to just test this just on my wrist like you would a baby's bottle and it feels about skin temperature, which is what we want. So that means it's cool enough to not kill our sourdough. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pour that in. Now you can see I have the paddle attachment on my sand mixer. We're gonna go ahead and mix this up. Okay, that should only take um, 30 seconds or so. Once that's incorporated, we're going to add some flour. We're going to start with one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You could use bread flour instead if you prefer. You could, I've never tried this recipe with whole wheat flour, but you could certainly try it. If you do try it with whole wheat flour, leave a comment and let me know how it is. So I would like to know too. This is a half cup measuring cup that I'm using here. So I need three of them to get my one and a half. Okay. So I've got that in. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly incorporate the flour. Definitely want to do it on the slow side because I don't want a cloud of flour in my kitchen. So you see how this batter is nice and thick. Once your batter looks nice and thick like that, you're going to take off the paddle mixer and we're gonna to switch to the dough hook. I'm just going to scrape all of this dough off. We don't want to lose any of it. So this will, switching to the dough hook now will help our bread get a little head start with kneading. Now we're going to add one cup more of all-purpose flour. And 
And then once again, we're going to start this really slowly. Now we're gonna need this for a few minutes. See how the dough is still stuck all over the sides of the bowl right now? What we want is for it to basically all cling together in one round ball around the center of the dough hook. Once we see that it's consistently clinging around, we're gonna knead it for just a little bit longer. And then we're going to switch it to an oiled bowl to rise. So notice how the dough isn't all stuck on the sides of the bowl anymore. See how it's all gathered into one ball around the dough hook? That's what we want. That's how we know that our dough is done kneading. So I have a bowl here that I've coated with an olive oil cooking spray. We're going to go ahead and transfer our dough into this bowl to rise. So we just want to kind of grab it off the dough hook. And you'll notice as you make this, you'll notice that the consistency of the dough has changed quite a bit since you first started kneading it. Um, it should be a little bit less sticky. It should be a little bit smoother. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the dough off the bottom. So this dough is less wet than many other sourdough recipes that we've made together. I'm just going to try to shape it just roughly into a ball so it's got a nice smooth top. You're going to put it in smooth side down and kind of roll it around in the oil so it gets coated and then flip it so that it's coated on all sides. You can see how shiny and smooth and coated that is. We are going to need to do four sets of stretches and folds. And really don't stress about these stretches and folds. If being tied down to a clock is intimidating to you with sourdough, just know sourdough is very forgiving. If you miss a set of stretches and folds, it will be fine. If you miss your timing, if you do them just in the wrong order, it's gonna be fine. The worst thing that can happen is your bread may not be shaped quite as well as it would have with the stretches and folds. It will still be delicious. Don't let that intimidate you or stop you from trying this recipe because I promise it's really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this up. I'm going to meet you back here in about half an hour to do our first set of stretches and folds and we will talk about that when I meet you back here. So it's been about half an hour and it's time to do our first stretch and fold on our bread. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look. Okay, so you can see there's not a lot of change right now. This bread looks pretty much the same as when we put it in. So this is how we're gonna go ahead and do our set of stretches and folds. We're going to grab one side of the bread and kind of pull it up into the middle. Go around, grab the other side, pull it up. And you're just gonna go all the way around. And then we're gonna put our bread back in the bowl upside down so that all of the seams are on the bottom. Now, because this dough is a lot less wet than some of the other sourdough recipes that we've made, I am able to take it completely out of the bowl, hold it in my hands and do the stretches and folds that way. So that's how we're going to do this recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this bread back up. In another half an hour, I'm going to do the same thing. And then in another hour after that, I'm going to do it again. And then we're going to do it one more time. That's gonna be the final time and I'm gonna meet you back here because after we do that, we're going to go ahead and put our bread in the fridge. Okay, so we're back to do our very last set of stretches and folds. We're just going to do the same process again, and then we're going to go ahead and pop our dough in the refrigerator overnight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I will meet you back here in the morning and I will show you how to proceed with shaping your dough and with baking your bread.
Hi friends, it's the next morning. I pulled our bread dough out of the refrigerator. I actually pulled this out of the refrigerator about between a half hour and an hour ago to let it warm up and come up to room temperature a little bit. It's a lot easier to shape if you let it warm up a little bit rather than trying to shape it cold right out of the refrigerator. So let's open this up and take a look at what our bread looks like. Okay, so you can see it's risen a little bit. It hasn't risen a real lot because it was in the refrigerator overnight, but we're going to let it get its real rise where we really try to achieve a bigger volume after we shape it. So what we're going to do is shape this bread. We're going to take it out of the bowl. Now to shape this bread, you don't want a lot of flour on your surface. I'm actually not using any on my counter here because you want the dough to develop a little bit of tension around the outside. That's what's going to allow it to keep its shape. And if you use a surface that's too floured, you're not really going to be able to develop that tension. So because this bread is going to be for sandwiches, we don't want to shape it into a round. We want to shape it into a long skinny shape. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing that we're going to do is to kind of just make it a little bit round. Okay, I'm going to flip it over so that it's smooth side down. You can see we have a little bit of creasing in this here, on this side here. Now we're gonna flatten it out a little bit. Don't be too rough with it because you don't want to knead out all of the air pockets that we've created overnight, but we do want to get it into the shape that we want. So to shape it into our long loaf shape, you're going to grab two corners of this. You're gonna grab two corners of this round and basically pull them back. And then we see you get this weird lump in the middle. We're gonna push that down. Now we're gonna flip this around and we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Grab the two corners, basically pull them up. We're gonna push this lump down too. And now we kind of want to fold it in half and bring, bring it around. Now you're gonna get a seam here. We wanna pinch that closed. Now you can see I have a little bit of a gap here, which isn't great. So we're gonna to try to fix that as best we can. But you can see we have this kind of oblong football shape. So what we're going to do now is roll it out a little bit more just to elongate it a little bit. Now here is where the tension really comes into play. By rolling this on the countertop, can you see how this, the edge of this loaf is getting nice and tight? That's what we want. We want a little more tension that's going to really help it hold its shape while it rises and cooks. This is about the size that I want it to be. Now the recipe that we're using does actually call for using a loaf pan. I prefer to do it this way and to just bake it on a cookie sheet like this. You can see I've lined mine with a silicone baking mat to prevent sticking. If you don't have one of those, you can definitely use parchment paper instead. I just like to use these because they're reusable. So once you get your bread rolled out how you, however long you want it to be, or if you're using a loaf pan, get it into the loaf pan. You're going to go ahead and put it on your mat. You're going to put it seam side down because we want the smooth side on top. And then you're just going to set this aside in a warm place to rise for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe up to two hours, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. So I'm going to cover this with a dish towel just to protect it from dirt or anything else that could get in it. And I'm going to meet you back here when it's done rising and we'll talk about how to bake it. So it's been about an hour and a half. Our bread is nice and puffy and risen now. I've got the oven preheated to 400 degrees. That is different from what the recipe recommends. The recipe says to cook it at 350 degrees, but because I'm not making it in a loaf pan, because I'm making it on a sheet pan, I'm doing it a little bit differently. So you can feel free to follow whichever method you would like to follow. I'm just gonna show you how I make it, and you can feel free to try the way the, the recipe is written as well. So I'm just gonna bring you over here and show you what our bread looks like. So as you can see here, our bread is nice and puffy. It's doubled in size and risen. So the first thing that we're going to do to get this in the oven is we are going to score the top of our bread. I have here a bread lame. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right because I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, this is basically, it's a handle with a little razor blade on it. You can get these on Amazon or any place like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to score the top of our bread. I'm gonna do four or five diagonal slashes down the bread. Some people prefer to do just one single slash down the center, whichever your preference is, that's fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and brush the top of the bread with an egg wash. So before I score this, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up our egg wash. Now I have a basket of eggs here. When I'm using 
an egg for an egg wash. I like to take advantage of using some of these really small eggs. I have a couple chickens that usually lay pretty small eggs. And so rather than using a big egg and wasting half of it, this is a perfect way to use up some of the small ones. So I'm gonna crack the egg into our mug here. And then go ahead and just heat that up with a fork to create the egg wash. So we'll just have this here ready for after we score our bread. Now, if you don't have one of these scoring tools, you can definitely use a really sharp knife as well. Just make sure that it's really sharp because a dull knife is not going to do a good job scoring. Now, the key with scoring, you don't want to be hesitant. You want to do quick and firm strokes. So we're gonna score this bread about half an inch deep and I'm just going to put the corner in. Basically scoring the bread allows it to open up the way that you want it to open up in the oven. Your bread is going to, it is going to open up some way. So in the case of a sandwich bread, we want to basically direct how it's going to open and help it to open up the way we want it to rather than just opening up um, just whichever which way. It just helps you control the, the shape of your loaf a little bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and just brush our egg wash all over the bread. You wanna kinda of brush it in the slits too. Now, as I mentioned, I'm baking this bread at 400 degrees instead of 350, like the recipe says. I'm going to the recipe says to bake it for between 30 to 35 minutes. Because I'm baking it at a higher temperature, I'm going to check on it at 25 minutes. So you can take a look at the score patterns there. You can take a look at the egg wash. Basically what the egg wash does is it creates that, that nice shine on the bread. It also gives your crust a little bit of a different texture than if you didn't use the egg wash. And so for this type of bread, I like to have the egg wash on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this in the oven. I'm going to check on it in 25 minutes and I will meet you back here when it's time to pull out of the oven. Okay, so our timer just went off. So let's open up the oven and take a look at our bread. We'll see if it's done. Yep, that definitely looks done. So let's pull that out. So take a look at this bread nice and browned, nice and shiny from the egg wash. It's opened up exactly the way we wanted it to. So this bread looks perfect. So thank you so much for hanging out and making bread with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you are encouraged to try this bread. It's definitely a great bread. It's different than your traditional sourdough. Rather than the, the round bread with the really crunchy crust, this bread has a nice soft crust. It's great for sandwiches. It's great for making French toast with. It's just an all-around delicious bread. So this is a great go-to recipe and it's actually really easy. If you do try it, let me know if you tried the modified version that I've shown in this video or if you tried the version that the recipe recommends. Either way, I would love to know what you think of it. I'll see you next time. Bye!